need coffee and an IV. Stat. I'm so fucking excited for this video. <laughs> Getting coffee from your favorite neighborhood surly diner owner. You know why? I'm talking about Luke. I'm talking about Luke Danes, people! Luke Danes! I love Gilmore Girls with the fire of a thousand suns. I am going to be reading Rory Gilmore's favorite books. I want to be clear. <laughs> Rory Gilmore has like 600 books or something like that that she talks about throughout the course of the show Gilmore Girls. I'm not reading 600 books for this video. I'm gonna be talking about the books that Rory references most often that are important to her relationships with other characters that I remember specifically like from watching it the first time that I remember vividly Rory reading. I'm a massive Gilmore Girls fan. I immediately fell in love with the fast talking whip smart women that were on screen and that had complex and interesting relationships with men but were not defined by them. I said yes I'm here for that. Also my mom is my best friend and I often tell people that we have a Rory and Lorelai dynamic situation going on. It means a lot to me because I really like the representation of a single mother. Just like the Gilmore Girls, I'm a fiend for coffee. Can't go a day without it unless I plan to take a four hour nap in the middle of the day. I will say there are jokes in Gilmore Girls that did not stand the test of time. There are jokes in the show that are problematic. I know that there are going to be questions about what team I'm on in terms of Rory's boyfriends. Anyone but Dean. Jess mainly. I'm, I'm in love with Jess Mariano and every time he pops up on screen I gasp. And I also do love Logan even though he's kind of a dick. I think Matt Sucre is dreamy. Jess and then like Logan. And then like six feet underground Dean. I'm gonna try to do some Gilmore Girls-esque things in this vlog. I don't know really what that means but we'll find out. The books I have picked out. First and foremost, when I thought about doing this vlog, I immediately knew that I had to read Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. So? It's depressing. It's beautiful. She throws herself under a train. But it's one of my favorite books. I just picked this up for the first time <laughs> and a bitch is heavy. All right. No fucking way. Why did I think it was gonna be like 500 pages? Oh, I'm having a moment. It is 923 pages. Rory. <sighs> I've been wanting to get into Russian literature for a while and I've heard that Anna Karenina is a good place to start with Tolstoy. This is gonna be rough. <laughs> I think I'm gonna really like it, but it is gonna be a, a trek. I'm gonna do it. Next, I also have The Complete Stories of Dorothy Parker. So, uh, what are you reading? The Portable Dorothy Parker. I read the introduction to this last night and I'm very excited about it. They're supposed to be really satirical and witty and feminist, which makes sense that Rory would love stories that include those elements. So I'm excited about this. Next, I'm going to read two books that I don't have yet. I'm going to read Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman. In one episode, Richard gives her a copy of Leaves of Grass. Oh my God, it's amazing. Leaves of Grass in Greek. 100 years old, some beautiful engravings. Well, now I have to learn Greek. It's shared between her and her grandfather. And while we're talking about poetry, I'm also going to be reading Howl by Allen Ginsberg, which is the book that Jess takes from her room and then writes in the margins and annotates all over and gives back to her. You bought a copy? I told you I'd lend you mine. It is yours. I just want to put some notes in the margins for you. What? Night, Rory. I love him so much and honestly if anybody were to annotate Allen Ginsberg and give it to me I would fall in love with them on the spot because I love Allen Ginsberg. I will also be reading Joan Didion's Year of Magical Thinking for this video which she reads on the vacation trip that she goes on with Logan and then also with Lorelai and Luke on their like double date vacation trip that's like super awkward and weird. Hey you. Joan Didion seems like a very Rory and Lorelai author. I want you right now, before you watch any more, tell me what book you most associate with Rory and tell me who your favorite character in Gilmore Girls is. All right, I'm gonna get started. Cheers. That's the face of a woman who has just read 900 pages of Russian literature. And soon, 
that will be my face. All right, let's go. I have read like five or six of the stories so far. They're very short. They're more like vignettes or like scenes. But they're funny. They're satirical. I can definitely see why this was somebody that Amy Sherman Palladino referenced as somebody that Rory liked. There are elements of it that are very Rory and Lorelai. So far, the ones that I've read have been pretty similar. So I'm hoping that they start to get varied and different. I am on like page 60 and I haven't met Anna Karenina yet. I was under the impression that the entire book took place on a train with her on it. So I'm realizing I'm, I'm very much misunderstanding this book. Let me update you. I'm slogging my way through Anna Karenina, but I still have a long way to go. I'm liking it a lot, for sure. But what happened is I made the mistake of starting Joan Didion's The Year of Magical Thinking, and it's like all I wanna read. This book is a memoir of the year after Joan Didion's husband died very suddenly. So it's about grief and death, but it's just written so well. Welcome to our night of Gilmore. Mm -hmm. This is my best friend Connor. This is slice of life theater. This is uh, exactly what we do. <laughs> what Rory and Lorelai do for fun is just buy a bunch of shit food and then watch movies together. So today, that's what we're gonna do. So we bought a bunch of junk food. Cheese it's my personal gospel. Two flavors. We're pairing that with family-sized sour patch kids. Honestly, the sexual tension we have. Unreal. The bar is too high. The sex is definitely disappointing. We've kind of had like a four-year conversational like foreplay going. Reese's pieces. Reese's pieces. For someone so They're literate, like... it always surprises me that <laughs> you choose to say it that way. Cookie dough bites. We got Oreos. You know, it makes me mad that I can get these in August, but I couldn't even get the Chromatica Oreos when they came out. I got the Chromatica Oreos. I reviewed that on my own personal Instagram, which will drop right here. Don't have that at all. <laughs> I don't read. That's kind of a lie. I read a little bit, but 
I like to what watch. Are you well, I'm on a book too. I do love watching movies that have been made conceived from books, and I think that is also something worth celebrating. Pop Tarts. No, but you do love Song of Achilles. I do love Song of Achilles. We're gonna watch The Edge of Seventeen, which is one of my favorite movies. We're gonna watch. Why am I barren? Bestie, this Hello. is my cousin. Um, I'm Bob's. Nice to meet you. <laughs> oh my god! The quote on it, because they all have a quote from the character. It says, "Think how dull your life would be without me." Me too, right now. The scent is tobacco vanilla. Oh my god! That sounds like a good mayo. <laughs> <laughs> that smells really good. I'm excited to like burn this while I read. I really like that one. Wendy Williams sex toys. <laughs> I think you can see the theme of this it's and lovely. figure out where we're I'm going. Right. Hell yeah, bestie. Yeah. Smells like Logan Huntsberger. You, you climb up here with me, it's one last minute you haven't lived. Also, this one, the scent is flannel musk. That's the one they musk. recommended. <laughs> that smells like a rich boy. <laughs> You're we'll loyal see. enough, Sally. Do you not know my fucking name? <laughs> I didn't know it. We're related. Name. Well, you know, internet saved you. I didn't know if your last name was out there. My last name is on my channel. I hate to say it, but Rory's books have put me in a little bit of a slump. It's not that I'm not liking them. Anna Karenina is dense. Rory's definitely exhibiting big brain energy. I just wish I was getting through them a little bit faster. And then I'm also burning my, my Jess Mariano candle to keep me inspired. Right, I have finished Rory's books. And by finish Rory's books, I mean I finished a tiny fraction of the books that Rory mentions in all of Gilmore Girls. And I do feel that my brain has gotten larger, but my attention span has gotten shorter. My main thesis statement about Rory's book recommendations is that there is one thing that I value that Rory Gilmore clearly does not, and that's brevity. The first one that I finished for this video was Joan Didion's The Year of Magical Thinking. This book is basically Joan Didion's memoir following the day that her husband died very suddenly in their home. And so it's her year of kind of learning how to think again, how all of her thinking and brain patterns and whatever changed in the wake of her husband's death. She's just very candid in her writing. She deals with grief in a very blunt, non-sugar-coated way. Once I started it, I really didn't want to put it down. Now I really want to read Joan Didion's other books. I'm really excited to hopefully get to them soon. It also makes a lot of sense to me that Amy Sherman Palladino would write Rory and Lorelai being fans of Joan Didion because she is such a smart, witty, kind of razor sharp woman writer. I don't know if I've ever said this on my channel, but I don't like to give star ratings to books anymore. I feel like it just doesn't leave enough room for nuanced thoughts about the books I'm reading, but I would recommend this book. The next book I'll talk about is The Complete Stories of Dorothy Parker. I didn't finish this book, but it wasn't like I DNF'd it because it's bad. I decided I would read 
read a range of the stories. I 100% see why Rory references Dorothy Parker so much. She's very witty, she's very funny, and even her narration feels a little bit like a Gilmore Girl, very like fast talking and satirical. I did think a lot of the stories were very similar. It was really easy to feel like they all kind of meshed together. Also, while I was reading this, uh, my friend Raya pointed out to me that at the end of every episode of Gilmore Girls, the production is Dorothy Parker Productions. Next, I read Anna Karenina. It was so long. And I would argue a little unnecessarily long. I mean, who am I to tell Leo Tolstoy how to write a book? But good lord, he went on. I definitely see why Tolstoy has persisted in the canon. There were some scenes in this book that were literally breathtaking. They were so beautifully written. But the ratio of breathtaking scenes to slogs of 20 pages talking about Russian political ideas that Tolstoy was trying to influence upon his audience. The ratio was not my ideal ratio. I don't know why this book was called Anna Karenina. She's literally not the main character. Her plot line was definitely the most interesting plot line. Overall, I was just like, Leo, brother, you're doing too much. William Shakespeare once said, brevity is the soul of wit. And none of these authors got that memo. Next, I read Howl by Allen Ginsberg. Allen Ginsberg has been one of my favorite poets since 10th grade English class when I did a massive paper on his poem, America, which I just think is so brilliant. But Howl is a collection of just a few poems. It's very short, very easy to get through of Allen Ginsberg's beautiful, arresting beat poetry. It's very vulgar, it's very blunt. If you want to read something that's more romantic and saccharine, a about life. Don't read Allen Ginsberg. A lot of his poetry focuses on communism and kind of the Red Scare era of America. He talks very openly about being queer in his work. I'm gonna give you my three favorites from Howell. America, Sunflower Sutra, the titular poem, Howell. It makes so much sense that Jess would love Allen Ginsberg. Allen Ginsberg is fitting with Jess's anger, all of the things that make Jess kind of a bad boy or like grungy. So it also makes sense that Rory would have read this because obviously she uh, she's into that sort of thing. Lastly, I read Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman. Now, there's like so many different editions of Leaves of Grass and some of them are like 600 pages. So I chose an edition of Leaves of Grass that's like one of the early editions and has like 10 or 15 of Walt Whitman's poems. I also really love Walt Whitman. It's worth it to read his poems that are really long, even if just for like one stanza that, you know, kind of knocks you on your ass. I love Uncle Walt. I think he's great. His whole kind of thesis statement of all of his poems is that we're all connected. No one is worth more than anyone else and I am worth as much as a leaf falling from a tree outside because everything is one interconnected cycle and loop. I will say Uncle Walt has some lines that are a little colonial. Amy Sherman Palladino was right on the nose with this one as a gift from Richard to Rory. Walt Whitman seems like exactly the kind of poet that Richard would read because of how layered it is. I can just see Richard sitting in that beautiful study and just reading Walt Whitman for hours and hours. I think one of the things I learned from this video is that Rory will kind of read anything. They definitely represent very different facets of Rory's personality. I kind of really want to do a video where I read Jess's book recommendations. I hope this brought some Stars Hollow vibes to you this autumn. Like this video if you think Rory should read a book that's like 150 pages max. Give that girl a break. Comment down below if if you've read any of these books and what your thoughts were or if there's other books that Roy has read that you have on your TBR and hit the subscribe button. Also super fast, the biggest shout out to my Lorelei. Raya, I love you so much. Thank you for changing my life for the better. In case you haven't heard it today, I love you.